I was born in uh, Yan Kedah, uh, a small town <coughs> on the west coast of uh, Kedah, and uh, uh, basically a kampung boy. I I'm uh, into age. I'm 47 years old. I have no secret about that. Um, well, I had my early education in Yan itself, and then uh, subsequently I <coughs> went to Sultan Dahmi College in Al Star. And after that, uh, I, I went on to did my to do my diploma in at UTM. Uh, in, in at that time, the campus was in Jalangani, and then uh, subsequently, I, I furthered my study my study to London, and and from there on, I came back. I think since. Uh, uh, graduation, uh, I started working in various firms, so we, I was involved in various types of, of work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then in 1986, uh, I set up my own practice by the name of architect FAA Srinan Berhad. At the time, I was just a sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. So the firm basically was involved in various types of projects. I mean, uh, we cannot be selective on what type of projects that we do. So, uh, I mean, we basically based on what, what projects that are, that are given to us, to us as long as the projects are not uh, something that is bad, something that is uh, wrong in terms of religion or in terms of my principle, I would usually like to do it. And, and our projects varies from the simplest housing to, to big township, uh, commercial, uh, and then uh, Institutional, uh, we were involved. Uh, we uh, quite. Uh, we were heavily involved in uh, designing of uh, uh, educational institution, and then um, <coughs> we we've been involved in sports uh, projects mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Uh, to me, um, the whatever projects, whatever skill, I would keep. Uh, you know, I would put a lot of effort in it and. Uh, and, uh, but however, uh, I think because the fact that after some time you have done so much of certain type of project, you become experts. For example, in, in the country you now, people, I think we are quite well known for designing of educational institution, uh, campus planning. I think we have also been involved in one polytechnic. We designed the polytechnic in uh, Penang uh, and then a few university campuses uh, and master planning of campus. So, in other words, uh, you have a lot of experience in designing different types of building. Yes. Yeah, so, my next question is, among all the work that we have designed, do you have any particular works that you like most? So, regarding this work, <coughs> maybe you can explain mm -hmm. the design concept, the design element, and the design principle that being involved <coughs> in that project. I see. I think a as an architect, I, I, I cannot say that uh, I cannot name specifically any particular project mm -hmm. that, that I that I have preference on. Yes. I mean as as a architect I would I, I, I love all of my project and mm -hmm. I treat all the projects the same and all of the clients the same. But however I think uh, maybe quite a number of people uh, many of you of the many of, of you would probably know uh, that uh, we, we have been known um, <coughs> for our national mm -hmm. sports complex projects. Yes. Uh, in 1998, when the, when Malaysia hosted the Commonwealth Games, yes. So we we were we were the architect that was uh, responsible for the development of the oh. whole the whole campus mm -hmm. uh, of the whole what they call national sports complex, mm -hmm. even the Athlete Village. So in that year, in fact, one year after uh, after that, uh, we received an award from uh, I think uh, Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia uh, invited an international jury to look at uh, various uh, projects okay. in Malaysia and uh, our <coughs> sports uh, complex, the, I mean the, the aquatic centre has aquatic received center. An, an, an award. So the, I mean uh, I have the yeah. project and the picture here will be, mm -hmm. let me go through. Yeah, this is the, as you know, this is the the <coughs> the national sports complex. Yeah, maybe you can put it in here. Yeah. Um, this is the master plan. We were responsible for designing of, of the whole master 
all of the master plan and this is the the stadium national which is the main building mm -hmm. and then uh, this is the indoor stadium yes. and this is the the aquatic center and here is the athlete village okay so uh, it was a very heavy uh, big task for us to complete this uh, project mm -hmm. uh, within i think as i remember about three three about less than three years Uh, and uh, the aquatic <coughs> center is located uh, here. Mm -hmm. So it it is uh, it is essentially a, a simple util utilitarian building mm -hmm. where there is a, 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 a international standard swimming complex that's supposed to to have um, uh, what this um, uh, inside it. Uh, competition arena, mm -hmm. uh, a training uh, a pool, and a diving pool. I see. So uh, <coughs> it was originally designed uh, without the roof uh, because I think uh, the government was constrained by perhaps I think by by cost as well. Mm -hmm. So, but later after some thoughts, I think the government decided to come back with with uh, asking us to to have to design a roof over it. So okay. it was quite, uh, uh, you know, a difficult task for us because the, all the design has already been mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I just uh, uh, I was looking at how how possible, what is the possibility to put a roof here? And then, of course, uh, it, you know, as a kampong boy who mm -hmm. grew up uh, in in a, in a uh, near the fishing village and all those, so it, it uh, you know, this this uh, this. This shape of uh, you know uh, in, in Kedah we call it tangkul, I see. where you know people used to, to to place this at the at the river mouth where you know if the, and they would lower it down and then as fish comes uh, pass by and they will lift up the using that thing so it uh, it that gives me uh, the, the the idea about this and then then by doing this we have been able to to design a roof which is basically uh, separated from the the structure. So I think the the uh, I think what um, I, I I personally like the project of course as, mm -hmm. as the architect but I think what the international jury feels that the I think the, the success in this project is that uh, I think in terms of the, the 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 lightness and the elegance of the, the of the structure mm -hmm. so the I think because of that we were given an award for for this oh, design so so yeah maybe yeah, <coughs> I can see that this is one of the Project that that you know that that our what our office is well uh, is known I mean known for. Um. Uh, and then uh, maybe um, the other projects that um, I I perhaps uh, feel that it would uh, that that you know we we are known for as well is um, I think uh, most of you will probably. No, the the International Islamic University, okay. University in in uh, in Gomba. So this is uh, is the campus in Gomba. This is the campus in, Gam in Gomba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we were the we were the master planner uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that designed the whole campus, and then after that we were given the, the task to design uh, the whole of the central. Central complex, which comprises about I think more than seventy percent of the academic building. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, what uh, I think the success of this project is that uh, the ability to to marry uh, Islamic architecture with a with a tropical architecture. So mm -hmm. if you can see, if I think many of you have been to UIA, yes, uh, you can see that the you know the building because of the 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 by by. By name is an Islamic university, so it carries that 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 image. At the same time, it is a very tropically uh, tropicalized building. It, it blends with the climate very well, with a deep overhang, large uh, corridor, all this. So this is another project that that we feel that you know that we, the office takes pride of. Okay, so. Regarding all the design that you showed to us just now, mm -hmm. maybe you can further detail mm -hmm. some of the design <coughs> in terms of the concept that being used mm 
mm-hmm. in terms of the elements that they approach into the design and the principle that involve in the project that you have showed to us just now. I think uh, architecture, I think unlike uh, any other art form, mm-hmm. because architecture is what, what, what we term as a, a realistic uh, 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 art form. So mm-hmm. anything that we do must, uh, you know, must be to, uh, must is realist is real compared to you know an art. I mean, you I can do anything. Uh, it's just mm-hmm. uh, on a piece of canvas. But architecture is a form of art that mm-hmm. that that it has got to be placed on site. Uh-huh. <coughs> it, it has got to be contextual. People has got to live in it. So I think uh, in any design, the first thing that we would uh, the first our first approach is to study the context of of <coughs> of a project. Uh, for example, for example. Uh, the site. I think uh, we have to really <coughs> study the site. Uh, for example, in, in the case of UIA, it is uh, located in, at the confluence of uh, two rivers, Sungai, I think Sungai Pusu and Sungai Gomba. Mm-hmm. So how we we, <coughs> we we place the building on site, how it capitalizes the, 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 the site environment, the orientation and whatnot. <coughs> uh, so that, that is important. And then uh, its relationship with uh, with uh, <coughs> with uh, the the with the environment, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, uh, orientation, in terms of view, vistas, mm-hmm. and all those. So I think uh, the most important uh, uh, the success of any building that that you see, it will that it will be on on how it it uh, comply or it responds to all these requirements. And then, of course, the rest, like um, how you you treat the facade, the architecture, mm-hmm. and all those, it it uh, it depends on 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 project to project. For example, like in the case of uh, <coughs> you, UIA is an is uh, the client specifically wanted uh, an Islamic image, so we give that Islamic image. But of course, Islamic uh, image in a tropical environment, and then like. Uh, when I showed you the the aquatic center just just now, it's essentially a modern building, modern utilitarian building. Uh, it is sports. It is associated with speed. All those. So the building has got to to portray a modern high tech image. Yes. And then perhaps when we are designing a resort, so it will be it will be something that is uh, you know it has got that resort image. And all those, I see. You know? Uh, furthermore, Tuan Haji, if we can see that Frank Lord Wright, when he wants to design, he mm-hmm. will try to s- relate his design with the environment. And some of the Turkish architect, when they want to start the design, they will stay on site for 40 days to inspire their ideas. Yes. Maybe on Tuan Haji's side, what usually inspire you to start <coughs> your design? Yeah, I think uh, it's true. I think uh, uh, what you mentioned about about uh, Turkish designers being at the site. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think the, the 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 most important inspiration to me is is the site itself. How you capitalize what you have at the, on on site. I mean, it is, it is sad to see some building that doesn't respond to site. Yes. <coughs> the site, whether whether it is rural. Whether it is in 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 uh, in the urban context, you know, it is important that a building must <coughs> blend with one another. So um, I think um, after having all done all that, you have complied uh, all the site requirement. You have taken advantage in terms of uh, uh, site. Uh, uh, what do you call this? Responding to all uh, like contour, uh, 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 perhaps the orientation of sun. Uh, and all those after all that then then of course the next stage is <coughs> what inspiration that you have on on the building form and i think uh uh i i, I gave you an example just now about the uh, our aquatic center you know it was based yeah. on something that mm-hmm. is very very common that, that, I, that I grow up with you know it's a, it's a fishing equipment <coughs> then, then there is um uh, another project that we have done uh, recently, but uh, which hasn't been built. Uh, uh, we hope to because it's supposed to be built, but recently was uh, government decided to put on hold for a while. But I heard it's going to be implemented in under the nine Malaysia plan. It is the Putrajaya Stadium. Uh, Putrajaya Stadium. The inspiration is a competition 
project uh, they invited quite a number of architects uh, I think uh, more than 10 prominent architects in the country so there uh, we our inspiration comes from from the the shape of of a of a leaf uh, oh. I have the <coughs> I mean uh, the 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 leaf, the leaf form, you know. Uh, that's why uh, that that gives us the idea. Uh, so you know, see, the, this is an example. <coughs> you know, when we first go to the project, as I mentioned earlier, it's always the site. You know, we I look see. at the site. What yeah. are the what are the the vista, the view, the the, the contour, and everything. Yeah. And then the next thing that we look is for inspiration in terms of building form. And then here we start looking at, uh, in this case, I uh, see uh, just. This is a typical leaf, you know, how it comes up. We, we, I mean, the, the, this one, it, it inspires us to with the design. And then of course, we look at other things about structure mm -hmm. and then other aspects like crowd control. This is because it involves uh, stadium design. Mm -hmm. Then, so you see, the, the product that, <coughs> that comes out is, uh, you know, uh, you see this, the, the roof of the, the stadium, you know, like uh, two, two pieces of leaves. Two pieces uh, of leaf, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's from a simplest form, uh, created by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we, we, we imitate that because, and, and yes. I think if we follow, uh, imitate Allah creation, we cannot go wrong. Yeah. So here, of course, uh, the leaf, you know, it has got a valley. Mm -hmm. so that's where we use that that valley of the leaves to to irrigate the water to go to the side, uh, so that when rain goes in, and then we use a suction uh, concept where. By, by gravity and the suction, it falls to, to the side. So, so you, you know, it, it, this is the inspiration. So we look at uh, here. I think it's more this thing here. It's, it's very clear here how mm -hmm. the two leaf forms mm -hmm. became the the character of the building. Mm -hmm. And of course, here uh, it shows further. Here we have even retractable roof that can open and close when it rains. So we. Yeah, I mean, we look at nature and then, uh, I mean, um, a lot of things inspire us, uh, nature and environment. Yeah. So basically from the explanation that you gave to us just now, the side, the nature, inspires yeah. some, most of your work that you've yes, done before. Yes. And you can see today nowadays there are a lot of style in architecture, such as uh, postmodern <coughs> architecture. Art Deco, high tech. So among all the design style that we have nowadays, do you have a particular design style which attracted you most? Mm. I think I, 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 as an architect, I, I don't, I don't believe in a particular style because mm -hmm. um, style, uh, architecture style is, is, is just it's like fashion, you know. If you study fashion, you know, oh, remember those days people wearing straight cut pants and then later people start wearing bell bottom and then bell bottom comes again you know <coughs> architecture also I remembered when I first came back from I graduated from university when I started practicing postmodernism was very very famous everybody uh -huh. wants to design postmodern building mm -hmm. and then later uh, uh, people are talking about uh, high-tech building you know uh, and then of course, uh, and then people start looking, uh, looking into tropical design, Balinese style, mm -hmm. and then now uh, perhaps uh, people are going towards minimalist architecture. So um, I, I don't believe in in in, in uh, style. I think what what most important thing is the the key factor in the design is as I said again the the the, the building must be contextual. I think the rest of the thing. <coughs> it depends. It depends on the client's needs and, and, and where you're building it, at what at what point of time that you're building it. Maybe if you see some of my earlier buildings, mm -hmm. I've got some postmodernism, postmodernism, postmodernist character. For example, uh, you know, uh, we did the Lada headquarters in Langkawi, you know, we followed that, that you know, the modernist style. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but, uh, you know, you see some of our later buildings now, we are going for for uh, minimalist uh, architecture, so it's, it depends, and, and then of course I have some client who who wanted to have uh, you know a, 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 a Sp Spanish design, so I have to comply. Or I, I, we are, I'm currently also practicing doing some of my work. Uh, I have an office in Australia, mm -hmm. and and there the <coughs> uh, Australian they, they would want different thing, a different style. I see. But again. Uh, uh, 
there are other things. I think the the, the contextual issues are, are, are always, uh, you know, is more important. You know, for example, I was talking about uh, designing building in Australia. Mm -hmm. Here, here we want to orientate the building uh, so that it will avoid the evening sun. I there, see. they want to have their openings towards the north so that they can have north north light in the in the evening. Mm -hmm. So this thing, this these issues are more important than than style. I, I think. Understand. Yeah, so that's why I don't really believe in in okay. particular style, but okay. but we always like to be trendy, of course, or ahead of trend. Uh -huh. Instead instead of following people, we always like to set trends. Yes, yes. So that's why in our architecture, we try to introduce new ideas that that are different, that set us above the the other the other people. Okay. Yeah. It should look like the side contact. Yes. Yes. Very, very I think. I think. This I want to emphasize this on on, on students especially. Yeah. Uh, then then we will have building that are you know that respond to to the environment you know. Yes. <coughs> For example, then we don't put up building on a hill slope that that you know that, that collapse. You know, yes. and these these are issues that are important. Yeah. If you bla you you comply basically complying to the context. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're not uh, uh, going against uh, uh, Allah's uh, will. You know. Yes. Yes. So you know that you know you, you do something that <coughs> that comply. You know uh, that minimize your problem. For example, like if you you don't want to have openings towards the evening sun, so that mm -hmm. then a lot of Light, heat and light comes in. That's why I don't agree with building with a lot of glass because then it will cause a lot of heat, bringing a lot of solar fenestration into the into the building. And then because of that, you have to find ways to try to make the building uh, cooler. You have to Im yes. invest on expensive air conditioning, all this. So yeah, I think that's that's the uh, most important. Uh, For the more energy that if we can see in the world today, like for Japanese architecture, they have their own style. Yeah. Or the Korean architecture, so maybe they have their own style, and some American designers, so they have their own style. So maybe you've been involved in designing a building in our countries for more than 20 years. Yeah. So maybe you can recognize, do you think that in Malaysia, we have a style or identity which, could, which we can term it as a Malaysian design or as a Malaysian style? I think the the thing with Malaysia is that we are essentially a, a multicultural country. Mm -hmm. So, and also our our people are very 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 ex very much exposed to to international style, and a lot of our people travel. <coughs> so I think to me it is it is hard to to say that. There is a particular style that is Malaysian because if you look at, um, <coughs> for example, Japan, they are essentially Japanese people. You know, yes. you go Korean, essentially Korean. So mm -hmm. we are essentially a multicultural country. But I think, to me, uh, Malaysian style of architecture is architecture that reflects the way we live. You know, yes. and 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 you know, uh, our, our our lifestyle uh, mm -hmm. and and the climate that we live in. Yes. So so to me. Uh, Architecture that responds to all this, uh, then they, they 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 are essentially Malaysian architecture. I mean, you can see <coughs> building that has uh, deep overhang, uh, buildings that have got uh, large balconies, large verandas, and especially building that 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 uh, allow ventilation across. <coughs> the building that tries to do some of these things. This to me are, are, are Malaysian architecture, and and of course the other thing that how the embellishment is on the on how we detail the building. For example, uh, the the roof pitch, the uh, treatment of the detailing, the facade in the buildings. So that this to me is is the, is the, the real Islamic architecture. Uh, I mean sorry, Malaysian architecture that mm. that will last, that will that will stay on forever. Mm. Is it? Because uh, I don't, I don't quite believe this idea of having um, high-rise building that that put a I minangkabau mean, roof yes, on top yeah. as a cap. Mm -hmm. Because number one, it is very hard. Because uh, you know our, our our scale of form, our buildings, uh, you know, never has uh, any uh, this type of uh, roof on. I mean, high-rise building. So, the, mm -hmm. so the scale is not there. So, but however. I mean, uh, in development, they are spread out. Uh, I mean, you can use uh, this type of roof, for example. I think we have done 
we have introduced this um, uh, Malaysian uh, Malay roof on, on I think quite successfully in, in our project in Penang Polytechnic mm -hmm. in uh, UI mm -hmm. where you know yeah. although it's a uh, essentially an Islamic uh, okay. facade but it has got uh, roof mm -hmm. verandas large yeah. walkways so to to me uh, I I feel this is the real this Malaysian architecture mm -hmm. and it will it will last and in fact you see the the newer buildings in fact uh, the more recent development uh, housing development especially in the more market housing you can see that a lot of this uh, the essence of this uh, Malaysian architecture being introduced like uh, the, the, the the stuff that I mentioned just now mm -hmm. and then with water elements being incorporated together yeah. uh, large uh, outdoor living spaces uh, so uh, so you can see that this is it becoming uh, I mean this is where when it is done with sincerity, it becomes successful. So yeah. I think in other words, maybe uh, Malaysian <coughs> style, we can conclude that it is the type of style which responds to the climate, to the site situation, and maybe to the activities that being involved. Uh, in yes, in yeah. the, the way, the way yeah. we live, yeah. our, our lifestyle. For example, uh, our, our people have like outdoor living, and yeah. then uh, we, we have uh, outdoor kitchen, yes, for example. Yes. Uh, these are the things how... Yeah that we do, you know, it reflects, it doesn't have to pretend, it is, you know, yes. it is how, how we live. Right? And furthermore, Tuan Haji, what do you think about the future or the challenge for the architecture <coughs> student in our country? I think, uh, <coughs> uh, challenge to the student or challenge to the profession? Challenge to the profession and challenge to the student. Oh, okay. <coughs> I think the challenge to the students would probably be um, I think uh, I think the use of technology I think uh, yes. now uh, I think technology is moving very fast I see. Uh, a lot of new hardware and software being introduced so they have to keep up mm -hmm. uh, they have to be able to use it in order to be able to to be to be you know to be uh, accepted by the industry, you know, mm -hmm. because if not, you go out <coughs> without these skills, you, you will not be you you will not be you know you will, might not be employed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think the other challenge is again uh, to me is uh, globalization. <coughs> so you have to, uh, <coughs> to to prepare yourself. Uh, you have to change your mindset <coughs> uh, to 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 accept this the fact that globalization is coming that. Uh, you are not like uh, during our time where we come back and then uh, we, we, we were the benefic beneficiary of uh, we benefited from new economic policy. Uh, yes. I think uh, students these days they've got to train, work hard, train hard, and to be competitive. And your mindset must be that you have to be prepared to work in an international environment even in our country because uh, a lot of foreigners will be allowed to come and work in our country mm -hmm. and also if you can uh, find a living here you have to be, be prepared to go overseas to work overseas you know so you have to be you have to train yourself to be at par with the rest basically making sure that uh, you are you are fit to be a global a global citizen to, yeah. to, to compete with the rest I think th those are for the students. Mm -hmm. I think for the prof profession too. I think the our <coughs> biggest threat again is is uh, globalization. Oh, so uh, now we see that there are lesser and lesser projects available in the country. So you have to start mm -hmm. <coughs> to you have to start going abroad uh, to find <coughs> projects. You know, and then at the same time we have got foreigners uh, coming into. Uh, in the into the country, in fact, since the last uh, five to five years, they mm -hmm. started coming because uh, you know under AFTA and WTO, yes. we signed that agreement, so we have to accept that fact that we have to compete with them. So that is our our biggest threat because the threat, in the sense that um, I think we are not prepared. Uh, we, we are not very prepared. Uh, we can't say that we are. Of course, we are more prepared than other developing countries, but we are not. Uh, we're not too prepared compared uh, to the to the people from from the western western world mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, uh, what do you call this bigger resources uh, financial resources <coughs> i think maybe in terms of experience we, we can claim that we were very experienced people but i think 
I think the biggest problem would be financial resources because they, they come from big organization, they, they, they are willing, they can compete. And then of course, when you go abroad, or even in our country, the, 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 the mindset of the people thinking that the, the Western people are better than us. So in fact, I remember, in fact, recently we've been going to, to, to the Middle Eastern country mm -hmm. to, to look for, to, to try to do some work there. I remember one, one Arab quoted, one Arab client quoted to me mm -hmm. that, you know, I said, I know that you <coughs> Malaysian are good, you know, but the problem is we still want to get a, a Western architects because they, they carry better name. And he quoted to me that if I am willing to buy uh, I know that there is a Mercedes in Malaysia made in Malaysia is equally, equally as good as Mercedes made in in uh, Germany but I will still buy I will pay double for Germany because it carries the name it comes yes, from the West yes. I think a lot of our clients here also sometimes feel like that so that that is the, the challenge the challenge among the challenge that we have got to face uh, seriously in the near future and we have to really change our mindset whether students or people in the, in the profession so I think from your explanation just now, the keyword for the challenge for the profession and for the student itself is globalization. Yeah. We, should, we should be ready for the challenge from outside and we should be ready to stand and to accept the challenge from outside. Yeah, yeah. So maybe <coughs> to conclude our interview today, then maybe you can give a uh, small advice <coughs> to the institution that will carry out the architecture program to <coughs> develop the student to produce architect for our country in the future. Maybe you can give some, some small advice, the kind of program that we are going to introduce to the student and the, <coughs> the kind of training that we want to give to the student so that the student will ready for the globalization in the future. <coughs> I think uh, the, yeah, I think, um, like all any other in the, uh, institution, uh, whatever program you have got to do, it has got to be industry friendly. You got to <coughs> to cater what the industry needs, and uh, and of course now in the near future the industry would be an international <coughs> industry. You're talking about an, an international market, whether it be locally or your student having to go overseas. Mm -hmm. So I think you have got to train, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, number one is uh, to to equip them with <coughs> with the, the the best skill that they could ever get. And for example, in terms of the use of <coughs> technology, uh, mm -hmm. you must we must be ahead of the other people. We have to look at uh, what our what what the Western world are doing. <coughs> How are they preparing their 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 you know students? And then um, you know, and of course the other thing is. Uh, Language, I think I, I totally agree with the, with the government change of policy with the with the emphasis towards English. <clears throat> I think it's not just English. I think you must uh, train, perhaps uh, find other languages because now I think I think the next <coughs> important language will be Mandarin. You know, <coughs> uh, maybe train your student to to you know to be conversant in Mandarin so then they can go and work in China because. China, there's a big, big market, big population, and I think China will be, uh, you know, uh, the the number world number one economy in the near future after <coughs> beating uh, U.S. even, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, or if you want to work in the Middle East, you know, uh, let them be conversant with Middle Eastern, not only language but culture, you know. So this this is the thing, and then uh, the other important thing is to change their mindset. I think uh, mindset uh, because everyone now they, they are training and expecting to come out and work in the Malaysian job market. Yes. I think uh, maybe <coughs> uh, you know the, to create to develop confidence you know, uh, uh, and you know and not just uh, I think we have to change from the concept of it's basically in our a lot of our institution. Uh, you know, I think I noticed it's a bit, a bit exam orientated. I think in our, uh, uh, I think we have to be that them be more very skill, orientated. skill orientated. <coughs> in fact, in my recent uh, talk that I give to polytechnic students, some polytechnic and community college students, uh, I said, <coughs> ask them not just to to look at architecture as being a traditional architect like like me. You know, we should 
look at other other associated industries you know uh, you know architecture in, in other 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 industries uh, you don't have not not in the traditional form where we do just do drawing practice do drawings and then uh, build buildings and perhaps you look into you know computer animation uh, look into you know all sorts of things and in fact I was advising some of them that you don't even think about becoming a white collar worker like us maybe um, think about maybe uh, ending up being a, a train builder yourself because I remember in in um, in Australia why they, they don't have problem with the construction worker like how we are facing right now because they have although small amount but uh, skill skill uh, train workers because I notice these days sometimes I, I dis quite disagree with our our education uh, technical or vocational education system is that what is happening is that everyone is training so that everybody <coughs> will end up becoming an architect or, or professional no? if you are in architecture line you know I, I, I remember having polytechnic student you know uh, uh, like just now I met so you know he, he yeah. Came as a polytechnic uh, students, and then and then they, after that he want to go some. I'm not talking about him, but some other people. Then he want to go into university, entering second year, and then in the end go into, and then it, it became it become to one mm -hmm. point, and then we, now it become a glut, you know. Mm -hmm. In so they have difficulty in getting securing job. And I think what they should do is try to think of uh, themselves ending up as as a as a blue collar worker, you know, maybe a successful. Um, uh, you know, uh, a small time builder or a tradesman, mm -hmm. a skillful plasterer, a skillful oh, bricklayer. Mm -hmm. I think those those profession. I think that you can earn earn better prospect and earn more money. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Australia, because I, I mentioned Australia because I I'm also practicing in Australia. I have some doing some project there, and mm -hmm. I noticed that you know, in fact, the people who are the blue collar worker they are working in 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 the construction industry. They 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 make better better wages wages than than even even a typical architect you know oh, okay. so i think then we will overcome this problem of of uh, you know having skilled worker like now we are importing workers, uh, from, workers outside. from outside uh. mm. <coughs> but of course uh, for those who are of, um, we are not stopping people from trying to be uh, the ultimate aim to be an architect i mean like me i always wanted to be an architect <laughs> i was small so but if you want to be an architect mm -hmm. Then you have to be prepared to compete uh, globally because after this we have to go abroad, and even if we stay in our country, mm -hmm. we have to fight with them. Yes. Yeah, so that that is my what I, what I mean, what I can advise from they my my little experience. To verify the skill, to yeah. verify the training, a lot yeah. of variety. The student can have a lot of skill, yes. not only specifically from certain field, but. From one courses, they have a variety of choices to yes. to very yes. very find skill. Yes. So to conclude our interview interview today, on behalf of the Ministry of Higher Education, we would like to thank you for coming to spend your time this evening, yes. and you. may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us the reward for sit, uh, for giving our time today for the benefit of our future students in the future. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.